An honest manager and I'm quite straight. If I've got something to say, I like to say it to your face. And I try and dink the keeper from 60 yards, don't I? It's a bar. Drags me off. He says, don't, don't ever, don't ever do that, son, in one of my teams. <laughs> and all the lads are thinking, fucking hell, what a piece of skill that was. <laughs> and then Billy Bremner comes in and like, I'm thinking, fucking, the, be the managers were better players than, you know, the lads. <laughs> used to join the training, they were frightening. So I've just stood up, I says, oi, you fucking remember you? You were in your prime at fucking Kettering. And I've come round this corner. This black Labrador, honestly, comes out, starts running after me. <laughs> Barking its fucking head off. But I do look at sometimes, I think, fucking hell, how do you do that? Can <laughs> Why can't you trap that ball? <laughs> Why are you kicking it with your shins? <laughs>
That's what we like us. That's what we like. That's what we like us fans to do. Come and enjoy yeah. yourself. Take yeah. over. Hey, who knows wins this week? Another massive winner. Devastated me because I never, I, I never played. What? What are you doing, never, man? I thought it was your but, highlight of the week. It is, and I were, and I, and I, and I, were, I were lost. We sat down and I were lost. Do you know why? Because I got, I got a phone call after Liverpool, after the first night in Liverpool, saying uh, somebody's tried using my card or you were trying to make, so I had to cancel my cards. I tried to get somebody tried frauding me. Anyway, so I had to cancel my card. And then I didn't get my card in time, but I did get it in time. But then I forgot to put the new details in, and then I went ah, so I couldn't put it on. Raging, I were. If if on your statement, John, it says white white hoodie, it wasn't me, right? <laughs> white hoodie, black capo. <laughs> <laughs> he's been pulled up. He's been pulled up by Mrs. for ordering Red Shoe Diaries on Sky, ordering then ordering Blue Movie. Oh, my cat! I don't know where my card is. I've been frauded. <laughs> there's some, there's some, there's somebody in the next village pulling it, pulling it off it with my, on my credit card. <laughs> but yeah, Die Wardle, I'm sure he's won before, you know. 1750 quid got uh, eight correct. So well done, Die. What well, time just before Christmas? Perfect. I know 10 winners got 30 quid and 44 got a tenner. So nice spread below that. But uh, yeah, once again, we'll have another 10 fixtures for Saturday. If you fancy it, just download the Who Knows Wins app, Google Play, iTunes Store, and uh, we'll have the Under the Cost League again, just a fiver. Put your fiver in the pot, make your predictions, and we split the pot between us, don't we? I tell you what, I might, I might, even, I might even have two this week because I missed last week. Treat I yourself, push, John. I might push Boa to that. Cheeky. We're all young lads, aren't we? Yeah. Well, like you said, it might make someone's Christmas. It certainly made Die Wardle's Christmas. We'll definitely be getting an extra few quid, quid for a few presents. John Sheridan, how are we doing? I'm all right, thank you, yeah. Thanks for joining I'm us. Right. to see you again. Not a problem. How's your Darren? <laughs> Obviously, our, our second right, yeah. Sheridan on the show. Yeah. yeah. Have He's we got, got the better it. one on today, in your opinion? Better player? Better Sheridan. Better Sheridan. Sheridan. Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ever go against him, would I? Uh, but yeah. I got the <laughs> You got the taller one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and one with a bit of air, what I've got left. <laughs> we've had a few lads on that have, have played for you in the past and we've had nothing but good words. Oh, yeah. yeah. Trotty, Neil no, Trotman, yeah, absolutely yeah, well, loved you. Listen, yeah, Trot's good lad. Uh, when you've been a manager for, I think I've probably managed for about 15 years now, you'll get ones what like you and you get ones what, what's, you know, don't agree sometimes with your decisions and... And, and what goes on and football is different today isn't it it's like I've always said I'm a bit old school and whether I can change now in the, in today's game it's probably a bit late for me to change in the way I want to manage but I managed for 15 years and I, I could probably say 95% if I'm being honest 95% I think of most players will have enjoyed playing for me but you'll get them who who don't uh, who disagree with you and that's just the way it is. I think any manager, better managers than me, will tell you that. They, there's always ones, uh, they'll come back and blame someone. Yeah, it's um, always them that won't be in the team. It's just natural, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so it you, is. If, it, if somebody it, plays every week, they're not going to slaughter you, are they? No. Because you play them. And if you're winning, it's, training's brilliant when you're winning. Everything's brilliant when you're winning. Um, but there's always sometimes faults. I'm, I'm a big believer. When I played anyway, or days gone by, and I don't want to try and go on about too much when days gone by when I played, but... I don't think I ever blamed the manager. I don't think I ever blamed training. I don't ever blamed how my chicken was cooked or what my <laughs> pasta was like, whether it was too hard or too soft. I just always looked at myself and thought, if I played shite, it was down to me. It went down no to fault. anyone else. Yeah. And I think that's... If people, if some players will look for excuses and they will look for ways to try and avoid of saying... Oh, I didn't play well today, and I was part of a team, and, and we didn't play well. Are you going to get? Try, sorry, John. Are you going to try and get back in? Um, I think there's one or two jobs. I thought. I think if if possibly, and I would, there was a chance, I would, I would, I would go back. But you're not actively seeking. I'm not actively seeking. No, I'm quite happy at the moment. We're just. I'm a granddad. I've just got my first grandchild, and I'm absolutely obsessed with her. So, and I think health reasons and things like. Like I say, football's changed so much. It's just stress. And like people as well know, I lost my parents quite close together just a year ago and it, it did affect me a little bit. I carried on in the football game and I possibly should have Took just left then out. and reflected on 
well, I went back instead. I stayed in at Swindon where I wanted to stay because I wanted to. I was confident that we could keep him up, but it didn't work out that way. And things were quite difficult behind the scenes, but that's not an excuse. I still think we had good enough players. And like I say, I was the manager and I was picking the team. And unfortunately, we didn't avoid the drop. How stressful was it for you, just managing, managing in general? Did you take it home with you in that? And is it as bad as what people say? I try not to take it home with me as much as I did in the early days, because I probably, yeah, in the early days, I thought about it too much. But as you get a bit older, you get a bit wiser. And there's other things in, in life. So I try not to take it on, but you do. It's just part and parcel, you know. It's, it's something you're thinking about the next game all the time, especially if you're losing as well. It's even harder. You're thinking what team, what players, how can I change things and how you get a result. So it drags on for the week till the next game. And when you're losing quite uh, quite often, it's it's a process what carries on, carries on. You've just got to work as hard as you can to, to try and get out of it. So, uh, no, it's a very, very stressful job. I couldn't do it, I don't think. I don't, I don't think I could. Could you? Yeah, he's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing with manager, you get I, well, I, well, I think, you get more enjoyment out of winning when you're a manager, I think. Or yeah. I have myself, personally. When you're doing well as a manager, I think I get more enjoyment than uh, when I was actually playing. Is that because of the process of the whole week Yeah, coming together on a Saturday yeah. at three? And, and listen, it works and it doesn't work. I've been at clubs where I've done well and I've been at clubs where you think, or people on the outside who've got an opinion think that you haven't a clue what you're doing and it's just... I said, like I said again, I've, I've seen better managers than me who've done really well, and then for some reason they go to a club and they, and they struggle like mad, and that's just because if we if we were all winning all the time and being great, and I'd probably have gone in for the Man United job this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's not many, there's not many who can. You've got it's all down to your players. At the end of the day, and you lads have played, it's all down to your players. If you've got a group of players and a good dressing room. It's massively important. A good dressing room and who can take a couple of players. A manager who, who loves that he's got a couple of players in the dressing room who can take care of other things while he can take a back seat and let them deal with it. Let the but dressing I, room look after itself. Yeah, but I find in today's football it doesn't happen as often as it as it should. Is it frustrating when you follow the process that's been successful and then you've got a different group of lads and it's just not working the same? Doing the same sort of process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you just got personalities, I think. Um, I've managed and I'm quite open. When I'm, I'm very quiet during the week, believe it or not. When it comes to a match day, I'm very... Because it's a time when it matters. Yeah. Probably a little bit too much. Some players will tell you who've played under me. You know, he shouts too much. But I'm, I'm only doing it for a reason. I'm never doing it to fall out with anyone. And like I say, I've, I've been very successful in the way I've managed. But at the same time, some players just can't respond to... Uh, and I found that in my later, in my last couple of jobs, they just can't respond to the way I am. And that's for me to ch is that for me to change now? Mm, no, I don't think so. You found because a difference in that between when you started managing and to your last job, say, or your last few jobs, bit of a change in characters, younger lads, and you know, need molly, molly, molly coddling a bit more. Yeah, and just and they're going with the way the game's going at the moment. Yeah, it is molly coddled. You got to put an arm around me. I totally respect that. But I'm quite, I'm just quite an honest manager and I'm quite straight. If I've got something to say, I like to say it to your face. I never disrespect anyone, but I'm just honest and I might be quite, you know, up front in what I'm saying to you, but I'm only saying it for a, purely for a simple reason to try and get something out of you. But the best manager I played on was the one who moaned at me the most, Ron Atkinson. And I had players who moaned at me so much. And when you when I first managed, I was very fortunate. I had players with your Gregans and your Richie Wellingses and Liddles and you lads would have played against me sometimes at the teams I managed. We had some good players. And you could and you could be up front with them and you can be, you know. I bet your Richie yeah. was up front with your back, was he? Yeah, but I I don't mind that. Yeah. I don't mind that. Griegs was a top player, too good for the level we were playing at. And Richie Wellings and all Liddles and all them. Lee Hughes, Craig Davis is all who went on to do really well and we were a really good team. But they had, they had that bit of something about them. You know, my captain shouted at him because he was a leader. Could take it. And yeah, just take it. And that's what they did. They could, they knew, they knew what, and they've probably had managers before me who probably quite similar. Um, and I just found like, they just responded by saying, come on, I'll just, they didn't have to look at me. You could, I bet, or I used to think fucking Ron shouting at me or any man. In my head, I'd think, will you shut the fuck up, you dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> but I'd never turn around and say it to him. Yeah. And I'll show you. And he was, I, I, knew, I always knew he was doing it for a reason. 
because he knew to like you know we had that respect yeah and I think some of them lads I've managed over the years but I just find games developing now and I totally understand I think you're seeing a different style of management and you definitely you think that brings more player power whereby it loses that respect or fear really yeah fear if you want to use that word yeah I won't say player power I just think every dressing room I bet is very quiet Yeah. in today's football is very quiet do you know, like you're on about the players now, we've spoke about it many times. Do you think it goes back to them um, not doing all the YTS and all that shit? Definitely. Again? I, do. I think you've got to be brought up with a bit of... I've always liked with someone with a, a player or not as a person off the pitch, have a bit of edge about you. You know, when you're going on the pitch, I mean, you can talk. And again, I'm, <clears throat> I'm bringing players up here, Roy Keane, when he played, when he, even when he was young. And he's probably one of the top, in he? But... I think you've just got to, even to a lower extent, lower level. I like a player who goes out there with a bit of edge and a bit of confidence and a bit of cockiness out on the pitch. And uh, I think today's footballers are just... Um, soft as shit. I wouldn't... Well, I could say, yeah, some of them are soft as shit. And they really annoy me. They're that soft. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it might, be, uh, it might be just me, but I'm going in sometimes in the last couple of jobs and I've managed and you're going in at our time and you could be getting beat 1-0, 2-0, we're not playing. You don't. There's only the manager who's the negative person in the dressing room because no one else is speaking. Yeah. So you've got to say everything and bring everything forward to the table. And, and like I say, I just, I just think sometimes they can't, they can't deal with it. And, but that's just, that's only me. There was a couple of them couldn't deal with it. Get a little knock here, they wanted to come off when you're getting beat. And I won't name him, but they know who they are. Soft as shit. Do you think? Because <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about it. <laughs> so you played under Roy Keane. Did you, you, you spoke about how he got frustrated yeah. with lads who didn't have his ability. <clears throat> did you have that in the same way still now with... Because obviously you're a hard player and you get on with it. When you're seeing lads that, like you're saying, soft as shit and the... The dealing with it different to how you would have done yeah. dealt with it is difficult to take. Like, I think sometimes, yeah, but that, I don't. I would never do that in a big-headed way because I played at a you know a decent level. But I do look at sometimes. I think, fucking hell, how do you do that? Can't, <laughs> why can't you trap that ball? <laughs> <laughs> why are you kicking it with your shins? <laughs> I'm gonna get onto trap in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Just come on, deal with it. And like, yeah, um, but I would never like. In a, you know, in a, oh, I've played at this level, you should easily be able to do this. Yeah. No, because they're all professional players and they're all good players. But yeah, you do think, I do look at things and think you should make that a lot more easier. You should stand <laughs> up, you shouldn't dive in and you should just show him the line and don't show him, you know, little yeah, things. Yeah. In. But maybe not, not even necessarily ability-wise, yeah. just being a bit harder, like. Character. But Character, I, yeah. I liked, I mean, I when I played in, in teams, I was, I never shut up moaning. I did it for a reason because I was trying to get the best out of the players who I was playing with and I was lucky again I was playing with good players but then I had players moaning at me if I weren't doing my job Yeah. so if you got all getting a grip of each other to get your standards to a level where if we're all doing it right we've got a good chance of winning haven't we and then they're coming in at half time and you lads again you've probably been in dressing rooms where you walk in, in at half time and someone wants one of your teammates wants to rip your head off because you haven't tracked your runner or you haven't done it I have never in the last four or five years, I don't see that at all anywhere. So, and I don't think, I think that's gone out of the game and I think that'll probably stay out of the game. Yeah, I don't think it'll come back. No. Like that. no. I, don't, I don't, people are scared of upsetting each other. It's fucking, do you, just do your fucking job. That's all you're asking. But then, then they go the other way then and go into the, Crumble. In the shell and, yeah, then, yeah. and then you get beat fucking falling. Well, you, you, you're picking on me and you're doing this, you're doing that and like, but it's for the reason. At the end of the day, you get on a Saturday or a Tuesday night whenever you're playing. It's about winning. There's no better feeling than winning. Mm. So sometimes you're going to say things what you don't agree with. I've never, I've never fell out with a, a player. I've had an argument. I've never fell out with a player. I'm not someone who holds a grudge or anything like that. Never. I'll say my piece and I'll get on top of the player. If he thinks he's right, I'll make sure. And I, if I think he's wrong, I'll make sure he goes out thinking I'm right. I think a lot of <laughs> what you said about the... <clears throat> They haven't come through the white DS and whatever. A lot of them will just think it's personal. They'll go with it and he fucking doesn't like us or he's bullying us and whatever. They just can't see that it's a professional thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They just... Well, again, Brownie, I'm thinking, I mean, that might be my fault because I haven't changed and I don't really want to change because, like I say, I've done well. But I know you've got to go with the times and managers today, I think now they know how they go into management and I think that's 
he said, necessity, innit? I think you've just got to do it that way. You know, you can't be a shouter and ball and you can't be a... That's the way, it, that was the way it was years ago when, and it was some very, very successful managers of it. Ferguson, I know, was like it. I've, I've heard Guardiola's like that. I've heard Klopp's like that. People have told me how he coaches in the, on the training ground and Guardiola and Klopp are very much in your face and expect this and expect that. And if I think you can see it yourself. If, you, if you're not performing in even them top teams, you won't play for them. Mm. But I like that that ruthlessness and that edge about you. The, all the all the top or successful teams, no matter what league you're in, you've always got a couple in in that in your dressing room. Jack Lester was a he was horrible. Jack, he was a moan, not horrible lad or anything. He was a top top lad, top top player as well. Brilliant for me, but he'd come in moaning at half time, and I loved it. You know, because I'd leave him then for two or three minutes, let Jack have a have a go, and we had Rob Page there as well, experience. Couple of players who'd like have a go at people, and so you leave it as a manager, don't you? You know, because you know they're saying it, and you don't need two or three voices doing it, but someone's got to come across with it. If you go in now, you think, oh god, they're, they're... you're looking around, you don't, you don't say anything. <clears throat> and that, to be fair, that means that Jack's obviously busting his balls because he. He, he can't come in at half time having a pop if he's not doing it himself. So you know that one of your best players is. Jack could do it, even if he weren't doing it himself, Jack could fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Jack could be the worst player on the pitch. But he was very rare <laughs> often because he was, he was top draw when we won the league. He was brilliant. Him and Davis up front, both moaning because people weren't crossing balls going in. You know, I think we both got 20 odd goals that season. Craig Davis, I never shut up moaning at him, Craig Davis. You know, look, players that are look, Ruben Reed's another. I don't think he's kicked a ball since he's stopped playing for me. He scored 20 goals in three consecutive seasons for me because I never shut up moaning at him. But did you know that got, that got the best out of him? Yeah, he had, that, he had that in and he was like, he did it and he had it for It was a love-hate relationship, do you know what I mean? But he got 20 and then he gets a big move or wages-wise he got a move and I think he'll tell you that. He'll have respect for me because I was on his case all the time. It was a love-hate relationship. But he could, he could handle it a little bit. Craig Davis is another... Gets, he's on, well, I don't, I don't talk how much money, but he goes to Barnsley after he's left Chesterfield, mm. trebles his money. He'll tell you, Craig, I don't know if you've done one with Craig. He wouldn't shut up. I, he, he'll tell you he didn't shut up moaning at me, Shez, when he was manager. <laughs> he says, yeah, and I got you your Range Rover, and I got you. <laughs> <laughs> now look at all the tattoos you got, you look the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> but he was another one. <laughs> Understood you. He wanted to like because I was shouting at him all. So I wanted on... to show you. Fuck you. Yeah, and he did. But he need. Do you think he need, he needed that? Oh, you have to. You have to get. Yeah, he's one definitely needed. Ruben needs another. You need it. But they could handle it as well in a way. Could you recognise people that couldn't handle it and go another way? Or is that where you think you, you might have to change a little bit? People need an arm over the shoulder. I don't, I don't shout them thinking can you handle it or you can't. I'm just being me really. Yeah. And sometimes I might have. It's like, you know, like last year when the crowds aren't there. You can imagine, you know, but it's so quiet on the pitch. I'm at Swindon and the quiet crowds aren't there. So I can see 60, 70 years, uh, yards away that my right back's not getting close enough and he's letting crosses coming in. And I don't see anyone on the pitch saying, get a bit closer and stop him. So me fucking like an idiot is fucking screaming like <laughs> 70. And you can imagine what it sounds like. It can't sound good, but someone's got to tell him. And I'm doing it during the game when there's no, and that's yeah. That's, and then, but it sounds it does. Sometimes it doesn't sound right, but it's got to be done because you know there's balls coming in left, right, and centre, and, and, and we're going to concede in a minute. It's been a few. The, the deaf ear was always a good one, wasn't it? When you could blatantly hear what's coming. <laughs> yeah. <and you> just... <laughs> oh yeah. I used to just wave my arm. Ron Atkinson would shout at me. I'd just go, turn, look that way, and wave my arm at him. <laughs> I went to turn. I would say, "Will you fuck off, you?" It is, though, do you know, like but he was doing it for it again. I know why he was doing it. Could you imagine like the teams that we played in, right, with no crowds, what it would have sounded oh. like? You'd have thought everybody fucking hated each other, wouldn't yeah. you? You know, like when we were playing, yeah. no crowds, fucking get close to him, you cunt! <laughs> but that's like how that. you used to yeah. say it, didn't yeah. you? I mean, it's not nice, but that's how you actually <laughs> talked. Ireland, I mean, I played for Ireland and I got in the team and Ray Houghton, oh my God, Mick McCarthy, my G, Packy Bonner, fucking never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, with venom, good good players though, weren't they? Top pros yeah. and that never shut up. What did I used to? I mean, I I used to moan for fun. Me at Brighty, you know, 
they're going to win us a game, aren't they, Waddle? And I mean, fucking, I wouldn't shut up at them. I'd moan at fucking Peter Shirley living behind me, wanting to kick fuck out of me after the game. <laughs> sure, he wanted to break my fucking neck every time I played with me, tell you that. But, uh, but most of the time we were going in, winning the game, and then we were all like, laughing and joking, after having him. a pint, and let's look forward to the next game. Any lads come back at you? Uh, Managing. I bet no. you wouldn't mind that either, though. You know, if, if someone stood up and wanted a, a tear up, would, how would you feel about it? Well, it depends how big they were. <laughs> <laughs> I'd leave Hursty alone, I'd leave Brighty alone, I'd leave Shirty alone. Um, what about as a manager, manager though? Manager, yeah. Oh, manager. Uh, what, join the game? Like at half time, you've oh, had yeah, a pop, but Rat, someone's f- gone for it. Ron Atkinson was so good at it. I mean, he picked on me, Hursty, and Bright, uh, me, Hursty, and Carlton Palmer all the time. All the time. It was always us, because he'd get a reaction off one of us. <laughs> That's why he'd done it. He'd always get a reaction. You stand up and fucking. But you weren't, you were never disrespectful to him. You'd just say, fucking, what? Well, and then you'd throw, well, shouldn't he fucking get tired? <laughs> <laughs> throw someone else in the mix. Um, but you were never disrespectful. To, well, to Ron, I wasn't. Or most managers, I wasn't. There was one or two who I thought, Pff. but uh, never to Ron. The one, like I said, the one who shouted and got on your back. But uh, he was brilliant. He was, I thought he was brilliant. Like his man management skills were the best I've, I've played under. So he was doing it for a reason. He was clever with it. Yeah. But no, I've never uh, really disrespected a manager. I, I might have fuck off, will you? And what about when you're a manager though? Has any any player completely lost their head with you? I weren't someone who would like fall out. I would never fall out with anyone. If, but I thought if someone was coming back at me, and I thought I'm quite witty, you know what I mean? I'd, I'll just come back with a one liner. And <laughs> I remember Wick, uh, Craig Westcard. I've had a go at him, and to be fair, Wesley again, another good lad, but he was having his shite, and he was one of them giggled and laughed too much. And I thought, is he taking a piss there, laughing? I think we're at Walsall or somewhere. Anyway, he'll, Craig was fine, and we're good mate. We fucking talk now, but he started coming at me and doing this and doing that, and I thought he's going too fucking far here. So he stood up, and anyway, he, and uh, so I've just stood up. I says, oi. You fucking remember you. You were in your prime at fucking Kettering. Don't you start fucking... <laughs> don't start fucking coming at me. And I just left it at that. <laughs> I think that's worse than a bollock. Yeah, yeah. You were in your prime at Kettering. And then yeah. just let them walking away and yeah. just leaving you without just thought. Leave, just leave that there. Because <laughs> he was getting to me. <laughs> and I said it to him. Make you a laugh got and to joke. him. A lot, laugh and joke. It. Anyway, it all stopped the argument anyway. <laughs> So uh, there's probably one or two more off the top of me, but I can't. Um... You were in your prime at Kettering. <laughs> just behave yourself. Another interest, uh, interest in 20 minutes, that yeah, one. Yeah, well, just going back to the start, we grew, grew up in Stratford. Stratford, yeah, yeah. yeah. Start at City. Yeah, young lad, 10 year old. Um, so called, well, it was the academy them days. It's obviously nothing like what it is today, but um, yeah, the. You would say the so-called best players in and around Manchester, and yeah, we had a really, really good team. Um, City fan, yeah, lived right next to Man United's ground. A lot of my mates are Man United, um, but I was not that. I went and watched them all the time. But City, if any team, I supported City. Did you get released by City? I got released. Yeah, Atti- just pure attitude. Um, right. I was actually I played up front. I was a centre forward when I was in me. In Another day. one. Yeah. Not, this is what people think, is yeah, it? Back to goal. There's a lot. Loads. Then, I, then I slowed down like John. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads start there. And I, 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 I slowed down when I was 13. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I played up front. Yeah, and uh, doing really well. Um, Schoolboy forms and all that. Uh, got down to 15. I just attitude. Attitude was all wrong. I had the I had the talent, but my attitude was just totally wrong and uh, just not living right. Way, like chip on your shoulder, just with my mates. No, not chip on my shoulder. Never had a chip on my no. shoulder. No, no. Um, just hanging around with my mates and not, yeah. you know, training Christmas Taking time. It serious. Yeah, yeah. I always thought probably got the talent and I was still playing for. It, but i was just going. I was play, I was actually playing behind the scenes. I was playing for a, a Sunday league team as well, Stratford Vicks. <laughs> Behind the scenes, <laughs> you score many for Stratford Vicks. Yeah, that's why I was playing for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we had a right team as well. <laughs> I was playing for City in the morning and playing for Stratford Vicks in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, my mates! And uh, so you just you just want to just be out with your pals on the streets. Yeah, just, and... yeah, yeah. Just attitude, mate. School, you know, like even wagging school on the odd occasion. And God. not into school. Pardon? You're not into school. 
Right. No, just football. Yeah. Some days I'd wag it all week and just go in Friday so I could play for the school team. <laughs> <laughs> no, my just totally, my attitude was totally wrong. Yeah. And I was very, very lucky. Um, I was playing for Stretford Vicks. I'd got been released by City. Darren, Darren had signed on at Leeds. My brother Darren was a schoolboy at Leeds at the time, 14. Um, and I was playing for Stretford Vicks. Like I say, we were a good team. Uh, and a Leeds scout come the game, <laughs> offered me a week's trial, went down, never... Never looked back. I, w I was frightened of going as well. I mean, I know Leeds is only down the road as well, but I was frightened of going. I didn't want to really leave my mates. I didn't want to leave home. I didn't, but I thought just this is a massive opportunity, massive opportunity to go to a club like Leeds were in the uh, old, well, old first division premiership. Alan Clark was a manager. I went down for a week's trial and God, I was so lucky. Playing in the youth team there, they had Dennis Irwin, Tommy Wright, Phelan, Aspin, Scott Sellers, Played, uh, stayed for a week, done really well. Still a striker at this point, or have you, no, have you dropped back? No, gone to midfield, yeah. Sorry, I'd gone back into midfield. <clears throat> played, done really, really well, and he offered me a contract. At what age? Six, 16, 17, 16, 17. Must have been hard leaving the, the Vicks, was it? Not leaving play, the Vicks, yeah. Not play leaving again. All the mates, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, yeah, I, probably, I think it, I'll tell you a few more stories. I, I ended up playing a few more games, but... No. <laughs> I ended up, uh, no, I went to Leeds and I, they offered me a, a year's contract and I thought, right, this is it, you know what I mean? £100 a week they offered me in 1982. When you're on nothing as well, do you know what I mean? I was looking for, a, I was working part-time or doing little jobs at home, but £100 from probably 20 quid, 25 quid a week and I, I thought, right, I'm never going to... Attitude change. Attitude changed, everything about me changed. Yeah. I just said, right, this is so lucky I've got this break. I you went think that there, were I performed a, unbelievable. You think that were a massive break in life as well? Break in life, getting you know away I mean? from... If you'd not gone there, you might have ended up with your mates. I've and... never had anything in life. My mum and dad, we were council estate, six boys and all that, rough as arseholes where we lived and everything. All my mates were like, do you know what I mean? Um, I just thought it was a massive opportunity. Just me, And I thought, that my thought process is, right, I can look after my parents. That's what I thought about. And I was only at Leeds for, uh, like I say, I had some good, like, I'd stayed in digs with Tommy Ryan, Scott Sellers, brilliant. You know, the atmosphere and like, they were top lads and really, really good players. Went on, a lot of them went on to get good careers. Dave Seaman was in Nets. Um, Did you have his tash then? Uh, He's only 15. That's a big one, he's been doing it a while, hasn't he? I don't think he did, no. <laughs> yeah, he's big quiff, but um, <laughs> no, and then everything just went really, ended up getting the Island Youth team because um, I was doing well, um, under 18s. And I got in Leeds team when I was 17 and a half, 18. I was playing well, really well in the youth team and Eddie Gray, Alan Clark, sorry, they got uh, relegated that year from the first division. And Alan, uh, Eddie Gray got the job. And I was playing for the youth team one more, uh, down to play, just Brian Fling got injured on the day of the game and he just says, pulled me out and gave me my debut. So you thought you were playing for the youth team in the morning, but you ended he, up playing for the first team. At... Yeah, he pulled me out of the game and he says, uh, Brian Flynn's injured, did you play? Good for you. Would you have got nervous? No, I didn't. didn't the way it's time to get nervous. That's, That's what I mean. If you <clears throat> if it, if it were if you'd have found out midweek Wednesday, oh, yeah, you'd yeah, for yeah. The first team. To, no, I just an hour late, two hours late, and I'm playing now. So uh, I got man of the match. I've, I've played unbelievable against Middlesbrough. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable, and ever stayed in the team ever since. It's frightening. Was that you in then? Yeah, stayed in the team. Yeah. Um, again, he's probably he's probably the biggest influence on my career, Eddie Gray. Did, he, did you have him in the youth team? Or? Yeah, no, Keith Minshew we had. And this is what I'm saying, you know, like earlier when we're talking about getting brought up in the youth team. and God, if we, I was absolutely, and we all were shit scared of our youth team manager. <clears throat> Keith Minshew, his name is. But, you know, when you look back, how good was he for your development in your yeah. career? And, well, we've said that and we're like, you know, if you can't take a bit of shit in the dressing room, are you going to take it if there's 25,000 screaming at you? Oh, he was hard as nails, hard as nails he was. And strict as anything. I'd say, and he come to see me down Plymouth when I was managing Plymouth, and I says, you know something, I hate you when you were a manager, but I says I probably would never have gone on and you know played a Jeez, long career and Jeez. done what I had to do because of you. Um, and then Eddie, as I got older, Eddie Gray was like biggest influence on my career. So, so how long into your first year contract did they offer you a new one? Were they quite good with that? Yeah, they only had a year, and then I signed uh, a three-year contract. I was never, you know, I was never bothered about the money. 
I just loved playing for Leeds. And like it was, uh, and you're playing, you're making, you know, I made my debut with Frank Worthington, Kenny Burns, and I'm talking about players who would moan at you <laughs> or get on your back in today's, wouldn't matter if you were 18, 19, oh, Kenny Burns and what a top, top player, do you know what I mean? Won the European Cups and Frank Gray and people like that. Or they'd be on your case if you weren't doing it, right? But I always think... you never... yourself as well, wouldn't you? <clears throat> them, Absolutely, them shit around yourself. You. Shit them yourself. Hymns. But I always look back, it, it develops you and it makes you that bit of a stronger character, even yeah. though you don't like it. And I, I was from the mentality, because of probably where I was brought up, you think, right, fuck you. <laughs> you do. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you. And I'm going to do this, do that. And you develop. And because you're playing with such good players, it develops you, doesn't it? And, but they're talking to you on the pitch. The manager never had to do anything in them days. Because you've got the players who are talking all the time on the pitch. Why was Eddie Gray so good with you? Why did you... Just... just Knew how to deal with you? He'd always come out on the training ground and do little things with you, just little technical things, you know, to make you better and, and, and tell you work on your touch and things like what will make you better. <clears throat> you know, if you lacked it, which I lacked a little bit of pace. So I always tried to work on my touch a lot. Because if your touch was on, you deal with the ball. Because I didn't have great pace. I weren't really physical. But I could take care of the ball and move it quickly. And, and sometimes you look at half decent and you probably look fitter than what you are. Listen, you try and create space for you. And these are little things he would tell you, like, and, it, and he'd come out and onto Do the Do it gym. with you? Yeah, yeah. So but he you, went that extra yard, like, that extra bit to make you a better player? Yeah, yeah. And once you're in the team, you ought to stay in the team, don't you? And I was lucky at Leeds. I, I played on some of the Billy Bremner, he heard me, after Eddie, Eddie got the sack when we were about fifth or sixth in the championship. And then Billy Bremner comes in and like, I'm thinking, fucking, the, be the managers were better players in, you know, the <laughs> they used to join in training, they were frightening. We always had ex-players coming in training as well. Norman Hunter and Nick Bates and one of Terry Orif, I think, come in. And they were like, they trained like they were still playing. You well, could so it's see, just to fetch his pals in for a On a Friday, a yeah. You know, when you're on a Friday, you have an 8v8, don't you, usually, just before the game, something like that. Yeah, they used to always come in on a Friday. Norman Hunter at the back, playing, he'd play at the back and he'd, like, steam into you and all that. <laughs> Norman's, I remember, Norman's ball, that's all he ever used to show. <laughs> Norman's ball. And then you got Billy Bremner, like, looking over there and taking the piss out of you and passing it over here, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Frightening, honestly. <laughs> Eddie Gray, like, oh... So you, you're going to learn off them. I used to watch, even even though I was in the team, and I, you know when Billy Bremner and like Eddie trained with you? Mm. I used to just watch him and think, how does he do that? And why, how, how, why is he so good? And you learn a lot from it. Just a little thing, yeah, learn, yeah. You think that's why he, he used to fetch him in? So you could learn from all. Do you think he just thought, oh, I haven't seen the lads for a couple of, a couple of weeks, I'll get, <laughs> get him in training. For five yeah, I just think they were all just dead close, weren't they? I think they're all... Well, whether they were going on the piss after, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, they just used to come in and... Listen, when you're a young, when you're young, and like I said, because there was a lot of young players, and you've got like Norman Hunter coming in, and he was a great fella. He taught to you, and Peter Lorimer, who played, you know, like them time kind of players. It's frightening. Legends, you, can only, you can only talk and ask him about things, can't you? And mm -hmm. Kenny Burns, when I played with him, you can only learn from him, and you've got to respect him. They won European cups or championships, mm -hmm. and God, unbelievable players. But great, I loved it at Leeds. Absolutely loved it. I mean, over what? 200 games for uh, Leeds. Two, yeah, 250. Going for 250, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I broke my leg. I was out for a season. I broke my leg at Barnsley. Broke it. To... Fuck, I never, I'll need to tell you this story. I was 19 when I broke my leg. 19, 20. We played Barnsley. Stuart Gray broke it. I don't think he meant it. Anyway, got the pot on, broke my leg. I'm out for big full length plaster on my leg. So... I'm back in Manchester. Obviously, there's not a lot I can do. Look after myself. I'm in Manchester. Um, so I'm due to get my pot off. Uh, they cut it down to your knee. And then I'm due. I've been out for about four or five months. So I'm due to get my pot off. Uh, it was Christmas time. So I'm in Manchester. So I thought, I've only got my pot on left to go a week. I think I was getting it off on just New Year, around New Year's. I took my pot off myself. <laughs> True story, this. So you could go out? So I could go out. Not so I could go out, I was just sick and tired of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm thinking, oh, I'm getting it off next week, so I've put me, I took my plaster pot off. So... How'd you get it off? Just so 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just down in the shed. <laughs> yeah, John doing it in the shed. <laughs> Done it in the kitchen. <laughs> little saw, I saw it off, got it off anyway. So uh, I'm still, I'm able to walk and that. I'm still walking with a limp. Anyway, I'm coming home one night. 
True story. I'm coming home one night. Sunday night, I was due to go back to Leeds on the Wednesday because I, get, I was getting my pot off on the Monday and I was going back to Leeds on the Wednesday, but I've took my pot off. I'm going home. It must have been half 11 at night on a wet, rainy night, right? So I'm running. I'm 500 yards probably from my mum and dad's house and I've come round the corner. This black Labrador, honestly, comes out, starts running after me, <laughs> barking its fucking head off. <laughs> right? And it wasn't like, it was a fucking big Labrador. <laughs> it starts running after me, right? True story. I've gone to jump this flower bed. It's about so high. And I'm limping. I'm like, man, I'm probably running like I do now. <laughs> and I've gone to jump the flower bed and caught my knee right on the edge of the flower bed. Same place where I broke it. So I'm, the dog's fucking, anyway, dog fucks off. I'm in this flower bed and I'm probably there for 20 minutes. <laughs> pissing down with rain. I'm, I've broke my leg again, haven't I? I've hit it right in the same place. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm in absolute agony and I'm whistling for some attention. From some <laughs> what fucking dog's dog coming back? Dog come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I mean. I always say I'm fucking lucky the dog did go. But I'm in, I'm in the uh, rose bushes. Is this, is this your flower bed, like your house or somebody else's? No, I'm, I'm 400 yards from me, my right. dad's, yeah. I remember the dog, Lions, the family was called Lions's and the fucking black Labrador. It's only got three legs now, the Labrador. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I've run and I've gone to jump and obviously, and I've caught my leg right on the thing. Um, and I've, I've ended up going to hospital and I've broke it again. How would you explain that one to the club? Eddie come to see me. Um, well, I, did, I just said on the Monday, my pot was off, wasn't it? So somehow I got away with it. He was understanding Eddie as well, but I broke it right, and, and they wanted to play it up, and they didn't play it. My leg. He come to see me in hospital. I was in hospital for a week, I, and then I was out again for the. Did you tell the hospital what had happened? Yeah, but did they not tell the club? No, because I got me hosp The hospital I was really dealing with was in was Leeds. It was right. in Leeds. I was so going back just, to Leeds. Just normal, just normal patient in a normal hospital in Manchester. Right, yeah. Yeah. So I've just gone. I've just, I've just had an accident. Yeah. Right. I kept it quiet. I didn't even mention about my pot or anything like But I cracked it right in the yeah, same place and I was out for the, another three or four months. Look at it, didn't have to play it. And this is Eddie Gray. This is where probably biggest influence. So I was in all pre-season, me rehab. I come back. I was in pre-season on my own, rehab, doing everything. And Eddie Gray must have done every day with me. Got oh, the, when the lads are off on holidays and all that sort of yeah, stuff. I was in for them two two months. I didn't have a holiday, ten, probably three, nearly three months. He was in every day with me, Eddie Gray, and he got me to the fittest I've probably ever been. And I come back, and the lads, we went to uh, went abroad somewhere, Switzerland. We won this tournament again, and like I just hit the ground running. Where I thought, God, I'm going to be struggling with this broken leg. And luckily, I was. It's a, he it's, got you up to scratch. Oh, he got me like fit as anything, unbelievable. Only he was there. I wouldn't have done it myself, would it? Because you know what we're like. Yeah. He was there constantly, constantly doing every run I was doing, everything I was doing, and he got me to a level where I've probably, probably never been before, fitness wise. And that's. Cool. It might have cost you another three months, four months, but do you think that fitter. actually were a blessing in disguise? Because if you'd not done your leg, you'd have probably gone away for the two months. Yeah. I don't know. Done whatever that. you'd have done. Yeah. And then like, come back just normally half fitish as, as you used well, to. Well, it, it could have fucked my career up as well, couldn't it? Yeah, well, So yeah. I look at it that way and just think, and so, again, lucky, lucky, touch wood on that occasion anyway. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Just imagine you this flower bed, you know, like the Shawshank Redemption when he gets out of the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm whistling, the rain's, coming, the rain's coming down on me, honestly. It's <laughs> half 11 at night, I'm thinking, where the fuck? It's usually coming in from the pub, aren't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, who are you whistling for? Anyway, someone comes back, uh, a lad who was lived around, Paul Kelly was called, come round the corner. <laughs> But we had some characters there. A Labrador. Is that shit in the flowers? <laughs> what the fuck's he doing in there? <laughs> Is that a good He's day? happy, he's whistling. <laughs> so, but uh, he had to go and get someone and carry me. Carried me to my mum's, yeah. But uh, no, no, we had some characters around there. I told you the story, didn't I, about Paddy? When I played for his team, did I tell you that story? Playing for Massey Ferguson's when my brothers were playing in their, like, dog and duck team, you know, pub team. Um. Anyway, it was one summer, when I first got it, just after uh, I broke my leg, got myself fitness. So I'm going watching. It was probably the following pre-season because we were just back training. 
I mean, still at Leeds? Yeah, still at Leeds. I was, again, 20, 20 year old. So I've gone to watch my brothers in this uh, Paddy Kelly, a fella called Paddy Kelly, local lad, local fella. He was the manager. Um, so I've gone down one night, summer, beautiful summer's night. I've got a pair of lead shorts on as well. Got my trainers on in the top. Watching the game and uh, my two brothers are playing. Anyway, they only had fucking 11, 12 players. One of them, but it was a semi-final. It was a big thing for him to get to the final. <laughs> so I'm watching. Anyway, they're getting beat 3-1. And uh, one of the lads gets injured. So I'm stood next to Paddy Kelly. I said, Paddy, I'll go on. <laughs> Right. In lead shorts. I had my lead shorts on as well. <laughs> two, again, two story. So uh, I says, Paddy, just put me on. No one will know. I'll just go under our Chris's name. So he puts me on, doesn't he? I go on the score hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> we win 5 3, right? I've got my trainers on. I went on with my trainers on. <laughs> we won 5 3, right? Again, we come in, they're in the final. Again, poor standard, but they were chuffed to bits. Paddy Kelly, Irish fella, fucking top fella. So we're in the changing rooms. After the game. So uh, we're there five, ten minutes, whatever. Anyway, the referee walks in, doesn't he? He's all, he shouts over to Paddy. Paddy, can I have a word with you? Paddy goes, oh, no, we're in shit street here. Ringer. So, uh, I said, Paddy, just say I'm Chris, Chris Sheridan. Just give him that name. So the ref says, uh, and you could hear what he was saying. He says, uh, who's that lad you brought on? Me. He says, who's it? who is it? What's his name? And Paddy, Chris, Chris Sheridan. He says, uh, no, he's good, isn't he? I just I says, I want to put his name forward for the interleague team. <laughs> <laughs> Your Chris played, did he go and play the interleague uh, team? Chris, no, probably three one. We call our Chris Egghead, so <laughs> But Paddy was absolute doubling. Shitting fell himself. Time. Oh shitting himself. Can you remember if they won the final? No, no, I don't think they did, no. What was the crap with the five aside? The five aside uh, oh, yeah. comp. Another one, that's another time. And again, the, when I played in that game, after that game, I was going training back to Leeds then. Again, just keeping it all quiet. But the one with uh, the five aside, oh God, my mates were playing in this big, big tournament. It was at Atmos Side Sports Centre every Tuesday, Friday. So Big, big tournament. <laughs> It was, it, yeah, but, it's got it Lincoln final. <laughs> but you, you'll know why it was a big, big tournament. When totally I you the prize was. It was a big, big tournament because of the prize you were getting. But they were playing all year and like they were playing in leagues and then you get to a certain stage. Anyway, they get to the like quarters in the semis, the lads. And it, it's every Tuesday, Friday at uh, my side. So they get to the quarters in the semis and what have you. So they think it's gonna, the standard's going to be a bit better, isn't it? Anyway. They've only asked me and Daz to play. Can you and your kid play? So, uh, I was playing for Leeds at the time. In the first team or? First you... team, yeah. <laughs> and it was on a Tuesday and Friday. So can you imagine? Tuesday weren't too bad, but Friday. I had to so play. So, side, in Moss Side on a Friday. Moss Side on a Friday night. So we went up, right? So playing in the quarter fight, me and our kids played. So we first uh, Fridays. So anyway, we've played, anyway, we've, Get to the final, don't we? <laughs> right. The final, if you win it, yeah, was a holiday to Malta for seven people. <laughs> right. So we played in it the final. It's a big tournament, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so we've only won it, haven't we? We've won it. We've won the final 4 0, I think. And anyway, thinking people have. And it's funny, I was speaking to a lad only a couple of weeks ago. He says, I remember playing against you in Moss Side. You and your kid played. Nobody recognise you like and say anything. Well, I think one or two did, but I used to wear a hat, a bobble hat. <laughs> <laughs> a fake Not whether that could disguise me. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I spent, what, what's that game with? Uh, got glasses Guess on. who? Guess who? With glasses and tash and no, bobble I couldn't hat. put too much on, could I? I just wore a hat. So, um, <laughs> put that on. They'll never know. <laughs> but anyway, we won it and we went to Malta for seven days. Did you go? Yeah, of course I did. You <laughs> <laughs> were an integral part of that one. <laughs> yeah, seven of us, yeah. <laughs> so, well, did you play on a Friday night and then actually play on the Saturday? For Leeds, you play yeah. five aside on the sa at Friday. Friday, yeah. And you play Saturday at three o'clock. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell! I travelled back after the game. <laughs> after the five aside, after five aside, I travelled back. Yeah. <laughs> what about two lads that you and Daz replaced? Surely they were a bit bit pissed off. I think you get the yeah, trip to Malta. Nah, well, some of them couldn't go because of the timing. Some of them were married lads, weren't they? You know, with yeah. the families. Well, you can imagine me and Daz saying if we're playing in the quarters that we're going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good, good, good trip. 
<coughs> Brilliant trip, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how long in your lead spell was was it that Howard took over? At the end, really. I'd been at Leeds from 82 to, uh, I think I would come 89. Seven, well, seven years, in it? So, six, seven years. Um, Must have been took it, like you say, you loved it at Leeds. And you, I think, I remember you said, would you have stayed there? Would you happily stay there? I would have played, if I could, I would have played at Leeds all my career, yeah. But the time had come, you know, like, again, I was a single lad in things that, I mean, I did like a drink, I did like going out. Um, which any young lad was. I was, I was. I was playing well at Leeds, you know what I mean? Again, I was... I had a massive relationship with the supporters and t- times were hard as well. We never had any money or, um, but we had a massive season in 87, 88. We got to the semi-final, the FA Cup and we got to the playoff final. We got beaten both and that was a massive season for me. Um, I could have left a couple of times because I was doing well personally. I was doing quite well and there was a club's watching me. So, but I would never, I was never going to leave. And the year we did get there, I signed the night before the playoff final. Billy was manager. I signed the night before the final, whether we win or lose, I signed a new contract because I just wanted to stay at Leeds. And that was to go up into the Premiership today or First Division them mm-hmm. days. So I signed the night before because I didn't want to go anywhere. I mean, we ended up getting beat by uh, Charlton. And then obviously FA Cup. And I had a really good year that year. And then the following year was a bit... We didn't start well. Eddie, uh, Billy got the sack and then I would come in. I, I just couldn't did play you know for that. Did you know straight away? I just didn't like the way he played and even training I didn't like. But I think that was me as well. It was time. I think it was time for me to... Time for a change. Yeah. Even though I would have stayed. But I just... Um, or the style of play? Or... Style of play didn't suit me. I would have done brilliant to get the team out of what they were struggling to get off, you know, mm. the league. So he he identified the players he wanted to get in. Um, I remember that I would, the team he had at Sheffield Wednesday before he come to Leeds, you know, big physical, strong, good, good team. And I just didn't think... Even though I watched it there, I just didn't think it would suit me. And I think Howard had made his mind up mm-hmm. more or less about me. Um, you know, he brought... Uh, I mean, we had some good players just coming through there as well. Bats, Speedy, uh, a couple of young players coming through. So, um, What were Batty like back then? Because we've heard reports that he just hates football. Did he hate it back then? I wouldn't say he hates football. Um, he was a good mate of mine as well, a, younger, a bit younger than me. Um we were always, if we went out, we went out together and uh, you could see he was going to be a good little player there. Just good at what he was good at. Yeah. Kept things simple, hard little fucker, you know what I mean? He'd let people know. Um, but he was a he was a good player, technically very good player. Uh, I wouldn't say he didn't like football, but... He's just not involved at all now, is he? Like you never No, he's just... Uh, like he's, he's, he's always been... He's all, I mean, I've talked to lads when he's at Newcastle and Blackburn. He's, I think he's been the same all his life. It's yeah. a scruffy bastard. <laughs> tight bastard. Uh, but a great lad. Last in, and first a good, out. Good, and a good, good player, yeah. Yeah. He just come in, come out. I think he I think he ended up getting married to a, a nice girl, his kids and that, and he, I think he lives far away now, doesn't he? I don't know. Great lad. I great he's lad. into his motorbikes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Great lad. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't think he want, didn't bother him what footballers had or yeah. what went with football. I think he just wanted to live his own way of life and full credit to him. If you think back, who who was in for you? You know, when they came to leaving Leeds, who was in I, for you? I, I went to Chelsea. I was going to sign for Chelsea. I had my medical at Chelsea and everything. So I went down to Chelsea again. I was I was a single lad going to London. I think if I was married with my wife today, I would have signed for probably for Chelsea. Well, she would have. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I went down on my medical and I just, you know, when you don't feel comfortable, I just thought, I, I liked to get home, you know, like live north. And or were it just the London, the the club? Or... No, it wasn't. It was Chelsea. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not like it is today, is it? I mean, Ken Bates took me out and um, we went for something to eat and that. But I just, no, I just felt uncomfortable. I went with my agent, I thought. But, and on the way home, funny enough, coming back from Chelsea, Knox Forest coming for me. And Forest were a good football inside then. And I thought, yeah, that's... I'll definitely go there. They offered me less money for this. But I wanted to go there. I thought he had good team, good players. Cluffy. Cluffy was manager. Um, I met Clough uh, on the motorway with my agent. Um, so you're on the way back from Chelsea, you get the call straight away and you just <coughs> meet Went to meet him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Did he have his... Who was his Green assistant? Green sweater. Yeah, assistant. Ronnie Fenton was there with him. Ronnie Fenton was his assistant then. Um yeah, yeah, he was dressed in his green sweater and all that. He'd had a couple of drinks, you could tell. <laughs> um, had he seen you much? 
No, he said, I've never seen you play. But my assistant says, you're a really good player. Well, he must have seen me play because we just played him three weeks before. <laughs> and <he had> played... <laughs> <laughs> we played him three weeks before the FA Cup. Do you think that would him sort of... Uh, do you think that would him sort of... Put any stamp on you straight away. Oh, you were you would like scared of him. Do you know what I mean? Well, Brian, it's Brian Clough, isn't it? But I've um, never seen you play when you, you know full well that he has. It seems sort of like half saying I'm the, I'm doing it half doing you a favour here. Yeah, he just says, oh well, when he assistant seen you, so, uh, and it was quite because we were going to Bordeaux uh, pre season, or whenever, or they wanted to get me signed up, um, but now he's just like. But I, I wanted to sign, you know what I mean? Because it was such a good footballing side. And I thought, yeah, it'll, it'll suit me the, the way I try and oh, I want to play. Uh, fucking hell, what a nightmare that was. Um, I signed a three-year contract. I went there, joined them. Straight Bordeaux? Yeah, the, the following week, Bordeaux, yeah. Uh, met up with all the like, I mean, Des Walker, Pacey, uh, Norm, Mark Crosby, mate. Um, yeah, just met them all and, and signed. It'll uh, be a good move, this and fucking disaster. So uh, it's like what we talked about before when managers, it doesn't work out at certain yeah. places. It's the same as players, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I went in there. I was only there three months. I went in there and like, I was doing well. I played I played one game. I got man of the match in the game, in the FA Cup against uh, Huddersfield. Got man of the match. And it's funny, it was a bit like this, the room. You know, pre we're playing Crystal Palace away on the Saturday. We're sat in it and I'm sat at the end and he sat all the lads around pre match me. Name the team, and he just shouts down to me. He says, uh, I'm going to arrest you today, young Sheridan. He said, you've had an hard week. <laughs> Fucking hell, I've only played one game. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, you didn't say anything, you know, like, you were like... And that was it. You just, you know, when you just face... I mean, there's a couple of players before me. I think Gary Megson and Ace and Hartford were a couple who were no, um, who just didn't play. Paid 650 grand for you as well. Yeah. Why do you think that he wasn't having you? I don't know. And it's funny, Norm, because Norm says, oh, tell that story when you played. I played, uh, we played Leicester pre-season. So, uh, one of, I think it was one of my first games pre-season. Anyway, the ball's come to me in midfield. I get older, I nutmeg so, someone, then I nutmeg another one. And I try and dink the keeper from 60 yards, don't I? It's a bar. Drags me off. Drags me off. He says, don't, don't, ever, don't ever do that, son, in one of my teams. <laughs> And all the lads are thinking, fucking hell, what a piece of skill that was. <laughs> Checked me off. Yeah. And I thought, eh? Again, you don't say anything, no, dear. Yeah. I, I didn't say Same anything. Like... So eventually comes to the crunch and he pulls it. Wednesday come in for me. So uh, again, we were playing Palace in the, uh, on a Wednesday night. So he, after the game, he says, oh, Sheffield Wednesday come in for you. And they were bottom of the league, Chef Wednesday. But Ron Atkinson was managing. I thought, yeah, I'd, I'd like to play for him. But uh, he goes, uh, we've agreed a deal. I says, what do you mean agreed a deal? I says, I don't, I don't have to go anywhere. I says, well, I'll stay here and fight for my place. He goes, <laughs> he goes, no, son, you won't get in one of my teams. <laughs> and that was it, simple as. It's bad, isn't it? And then I thought, fuck it, I'm going. Sheffield again near home. Big club, probably in a false position. And I left on the Wednesday... Left on the Wednesday, and we were playing them on the Saturday. Wednesday played Forest on the Saturday, so we went back. So normally you'd like to put it in where you can't play that game. No, Na- I now won't they? Played. played good game. We yeah, we beat them one 0 at Forest. Yeah. Did he have anything to say to you? Yeah, he's always pissed, wasn't he? And I don't like saying that because he was a top top manager, and again, I probably but he actually were. So it... yeah, he was he, he was under the influence. He, he probably didn't even know I was playing. He didn't even know I'd left. Probably, just left Forest. Probably, <laughs> probably didn't remember that you played that game for weeks before. What he said. Well, he was he listening. He was like, for what he's done, you can't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, it's a shame. I, I, I wish he just would have given me an opportunity because I do believe that I would have fitted in there. I would have fitted in there. All right. Yeah. Do you what think you weren't yourself? You know, like when you said, I was scared to say something. Oh, no, you, yeah, because you, usually... You, 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 you'd say, fuck it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, but I was just like, I mean, we were playing in reserves and, and we were top of the league. We were unbeaten the reserves. And like, you know, I think Archie Gemmell and Ronnie Fenton were thinking, come on, you've got to give him a chance. So, but no, nah, he was just Brian Clough, wasn't he? And again, when you're thinking he's done it with other players and it's just, it's his opinion. And uh, 
What were the Bordeaux trip like? Were it a training trip or like a fucking hell training? It was like a, another stag do, wasn't it? <laughs> like a stag do again, I'm jumping in, I'm bumping into loads of England internationals and they're like we're on session for a week, drinking for a week. We're cloth, I remember, I remember, cloth the thing I remember trip. about that trip, and like we did have a couple of drinks, but again they were they were good good players. You know what I mean? I think they, I think they drank when they could drink. Well, they had a drink when they were, you know, more or less allowed. And then when they played, they were good, good players. Do you know what I mean? It was just one of them. But the thing I remember about that trip is uh, Brian Laws having a fight with Des Walker. Oh, and I mean a proper, proper fight. Good, good fight that was. Training, <laughs> training ground or boozer? No, boozer. And then we're playing hide and seek and then summits happen and uh, fucking... <laughs> we're all having a night out. We're playing hide and seek. <laughs> Running through the boat. Anyway, it's just kicked off for some reason and they've ended up having a proper scrap, them two. You're having a night out and you're playing <laughs> hide and seek? We're all going to get back to them. We're in these shellies around. It's pitch black, not a light in sight. So someone shouts, let's have a game of hide and seek. <laughs> International footballers, man. Right? Kicked off for some reason. They were peeping while we came probably to Probably no, probably no. I, I think I can remember uh, Franz Gar was hiding in some bushes and I've got this big pole and I'm whacking this, these bushes. And, Franny, where are you? Like, <laughs> uh, so why, why, why did they kick off then? I don't know. I don't know what for what reason. But it was a proper fight. Well, it was then where you thought, oh, it's going to be good this. We'll no, leave this for a couple him, of yeah, minutes. Just let them carry on, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Brian Law's been a fighter. Yeah, something happened. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but we all forgot about the next day. Yeah, you just, yeah. We had a drink. Have another one when we go out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good crack. <laughs> <laughs>